What's up y'all, it's Celeste, and this is part two of a two-part series that I'm making on how to survive your first week post-op for top surgery. So if you haven't watched part one, you can either click the link up there or the link in the description to watch that and find out all about things like clothing, pillows, and hygiene items. So uh, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about food, medicine, and first aid. So starting with food, um, for me, I was trying to keep a fairly low sodium diet, uh, both before and after my top surgery for a couple weeks on either side to decrease the amount of swelling that I got because sodium does have an impact on swelling. I'm also vegan, which wasn't at all a hindrance for me or anything, but I'm just making a note of that because everything I'm talking about in this video is based on me eating vegan for that week. So uh, my mom and I were staying in an Airbnb, as I mentioned in part one. Um, so we did have access to a full kitchen and everything, uh, which was really awesome. I think most of what I'm talking about here, um, you could get away with having at least a microwave and a fridge, um, preferably a freezer, but at least a fridge I think would help some. Being able to fix your own stuff does help with the sodium aspect because a lot of restaurant food is very high in sodium. So I was kind of expecting that I might have some nausea the first couple of days, but I really didn't at all. Um, when I got home from the hospital, which was in the evening, um, I had some nausea, like immediately when I got home, I had some nausea and then it basically just went away and I didn't have any other nausea after that. So that really wasn't an impact in how I dealt with my food intake. Um, I didn't feel like I needed to, to um, only have like, really bland things or anything like that. But Dr. Garamani's office had suggested getting sourdough bread for nausea, so we had already gotten that. So I did eat some of that, the, mostly the first night and the, the next day. Um, and then the other thing that I ate quite a bit during that time was these uh, crackers, which are basically saltines. This is the Publix brand. But um, I like the unsalted tops because they're not quite as salty. So um, I, I already like prefer those, but um, that did help also with the sodium. Uh, trying to keep my sodium low, but these were really good because I was taking my medicine every few hours um, during the day and night, so I was supposed to be taking food with it. So instead of like having to have like an actual meal or something like that, you know, uh, every time I would wake up in the middle of the night, I could just have a few crackers and uh, or a piece of bread or something like that, and that worked out really well. So these were really good for that, and they were also just a good snack to have. Um, the other snack that I ate a lot, uh, which is the same that I do at home, is Cliff Bars, which are awesome. I personally like the chocolate chip the best. The brownie ones are also really good, um, but they have a whole bunch of different flavors, and these are really good because they are, um, they basically taste like you're eating a cookie. They're really good, but they also have a decent amount of protein and some other you know, nutrients and stuff like that. So as far as snacks go, they're pretty good, and, um, it's also good to have some extra protein since you're trying to heal and everything. So I ate a decent amount of these on the trip. I also had some applesauce, which was really good. Um, I, I used applesauce also for taking my medicine um, along with the crackers and stuff. And I also would just have it kind of as a snack because it was good. Um, and then pretty much every day for lunch, I had this soup, which is made by uh, Dr. McDougall. And it's a vegetable soup, it's a low sodium soup. So you would think that it wouldn't be all that great because you would think it would be kind of bland, but it's actually really good. And it is a little bit pricey. I think um, around here it costs like $3.39 or something like that for this, which is a little bit much for soup, but it's really good. And it does have a lot of nutrients and a lot of healthy stuff that help with healing. So I felt like it was a really good thing to have for lunch every day. And it was also really easy because we could just make it in the microwave. I was also very fortunate to have my mom down there taking care of me because she made dinner every night. So we would usually have a salad and then um, she would a lot of times make like baked potatoes or red potatoes um, and we would have sweet potatoes. She made acorn squash and then um, we would usually have some kind of green vegetable which um, most of that was like the pre-packaged ones that are either refrigerated or frozen where you can basically just like steam them in the bag. So that was really good. Um, so most of what we had, uh, like there were things that she made in the oven, but things like baked potatoes, I mean, you can easily make that in a microwave. And then we also got some like garden tenders and things like that. So I felt like I ate really well that week. Um, I ate pretty similarly to how I do at home, but it was really nice to have that kind of food 
where I didn't feel like I was eating a bunch of junk and I also didn't feel like I was eating stuff that was really unfamiliar or anything. So it was really nice to be able to eat pretty much the same as I do at home and have uh, stuff that I feel like is pretty healthy and a good balance of stuff. And also um, with the potatoes and the sweet potatoes and, and some of the vegetables and stuff, I felt like I was getting some pretty good fiber, which uh, I will get into in just a second why that was important. So most of that isn't like totally mind blowing advice or anything like that. But um, before I had surgery, I just wasn't really sure what to expect as far as what I would feel like eating and what would be like the best things to eat and stuff. So I'm just kind of giving my personal experience of like the fact that I didn't really have trouble eating anything due to nausea or anything like that. And that I feel like eating healthy um, and eating a good variety of vegetables and stuff like that really helped. Oh, and I totally forgot to mention um, that I ate Cheerios every morning for breakfast, which is exactly what I do at home. And then this isn't really food related exactly, but it kind of falls under the same category. Definitely get a bunch of bendy straws. Now this is a package of 180 that I got probably like 10 years ago and you know, I didn't really have to use that many, but you can get these like at the dollar store or, or wherever, um, you know, you can get smaller packages of them if you would prefer. But these are really important because it's actually really hard to like hold a glass and like actually like raise your arm enough to tilt it back without like probably spilling it all over yourself. So having bendy straws made, makes it really easy. And uh, what we actually did was my mom had some um, Tervis tumblers, which are basically just like a cup with a lid that uh, are insulated. And those were really great because she would be able to like fill it up for me and then I could just keep it with me wherever I was and not have to worry about spilling it or anything. So like I could actually have it with me when I was sleeping, um, I could actually like have it next to me and not worry about it like spilling on me. So it was really handy to be able to just have that and then we could just swap out the straw every so often to get a fresh one and it was just really easy. So definitely recommend these um, no matter what you're drinking out of. Th these are gonna make your life so much easier. So moving on to medicine stuff, which um, I had some prescriptions, which I don't have anymore, so I'm not gonna show those to you, but I did have an antibiotic and a pain medication both of which I got at uh, Walgreens. And the only thing I wanna mention about that is that I tried to get it at Publix, which was like right next to where we were staying and I think they were out of it or something. For some reason, they couldn't give it to me. So then I wanted to check Walgreens and because, it's, uh, because it was Percocet, which is like an opiate, um, they couldn't tell me over the phone whether they had any in stock. So I had to actually go to the store, which was like, 10 or 15 minutes away. So I mean, it's not like that was a big deal, but I just wanted to note that um, just so you can kind of be planning ahead um, when you get the prescription, which if you go to Dr. Garamoni, you're gonna get the prescription uh, at your pre-op, which is the day before your surgery. So you only have like part of that day basically to get it all filled and make sure you get it all in time for the next day. So just kind of keep that in mind that you might have to go to more than one place to get it. Um, maybe I just had bad luck that they were out of it at Publix um, for whatever reason, but uh, just, just something to keep in mind. But other than that, um, I did get a bunch of like supplements and over-the-counter things that I'm gonna talk about. So uh, the first thing is I got bromelain and arnica Montana. Uh, which Dr. Garamoni recommends. Um, he actually sells them through his office, but the ones that he sells, for one thing, are kind of expensive, and they're also not vegan. So if you are vegan, then you probably wanna get these yourself and not get through him because his, uh, the ones that he sells are, I think, gelatin capsules, and also the Arnica is made with lactose. Um, so this particular brand of Arnica is, I don't know if it's Oloa or Olois or something, but it's O-L-L-O-I-S. Um, and this is uh, made with sucrose, so it is vegan. And then this bromelain is made by Now brand and it's veg capsules, so it's not gelatin. Um, but I think the uh, dosage of these is pretty similar to what the bottle that Dr. Garamoni has is. It was a little hard to make it exact because the dosage is done differently on the different brands for some reason, but um, it's pretty close. But anyway, both of these, um, there's not really any way for me to tell you whether or not they actually helped because I didn't have a control group. It was just like me uh, taking it. So I don't know what would have happened if I didn't take it. Um, Arnica is a homeopathic medicine. And I know there's a lot of controversy about that, that a lot of people think that's a total sham. And I don't know whether it is or not, but 
this costs like five or six dollars and I personally would rather pay five or six dollars for a placebo effect that maybe helps than to, I don't know, than to just not even try it. Like, I don't know, it's, it's not like a big deal for me to pay five or six dollars for something and in the hopes that it might work. If it were really expensive, it would be a different story, but it wasn't, so why not, you know? Um, but I had taken both of these when I had a previous surgery. I had a rhinoplasty like 15 years ago and I had a really good experience then too. Again, it could be just that my body heals really well, but um, I felt like it was worth trying again. So I was given the Percocet as a pain med medication, but I didn't want to take that more than I really needed to. So I got uh, just extra strength, extra strength Tylenol to take after I stopped taking the Percocet or at least not during the same dosage period that I was taking that. So like I, for a while was taking this during the day when I needed it and then I would only take the Percocet at night, for example, but you do not want to take them both at the same time, like within the same hours range that you're supposed to like only have one dose um, because Percocet already has Tylenol in it. So, uh, so I do recommend getting something like this just to have, um, just to have some kind of pain relief without having to take the, the um, Percocet or whatever it is that you're given um, if you don't wanna take that for any longer than you have to. And one of the reasons that you might not wanna take it for too long is that it actually does cause constipation. So the other thing that I recommend is getting a stool softener. And this particular one I got is the Equate brand, which is from Walmart. And it is, uh, it's called Stool Softener Plus Stimulant Laxative. I got this one because it's tablets instead of gel caps. And I think it worked pretty well um, in addition to all of the fiber that I was eating. Um, I did have some constipation, but I didn't really have really any problem with that or really any discomfort from that until I would say like probably the last day that I had it. Um, I think it was like the third day that I was able to go to the bathroom. So it wasn't even that long of a period, but during that time period, I felt like, like I could tell that I was kind of constipated, but I wasn't in pain or anything. And it wasn't even really that uncomfortable. So I think this did help kind of move things along and also kind of help things not get too like backed up or anything. Um, so you'll definitely want to have something like that. And then the other thing that you'll probably want to have is some kind of uh, allergy medication, which um, this is again, the Walmart brand, but it's basically Benadryl and I had a lot of itching from the bandage that I had on, as well as especially the tape that was on underneath the bandage, which I couldn't actually really get to very easily, but it was like, what I had, uh, what Dr. Garamoni does is he has like this um, padding that goes on, uh, that's taped on with medical tape, and then over that, there's an ace bandage wrapped around. Um, so the tape that was used was very itchy for me, very irritating to my skin. And so this really helped with that. And speaking of the ACE bandage, I will talk about that next. So this is the ACE bandage that was wrapped around me by Dr. Garamoni um, at the end of my surgery. So this is what I had to wear the entire week. I was not able to take it off and I had to just wait until my post-op appointment, which was day six. And uh, so I knew that after I took this off that I was still gonna have to wear it for a while after that, but I knew that I was also gonna wanna wash this. So what I did was I just got an extra one off Amazon and that way I could like be washing and drying this one while I had this other one and then I could just swap back and forth. Now, this is 15 feet and I thought this would be like the same length, but as you can see, it's not. So I don't know if this is like 30 feet or I don't know, it seems like it must be pretty long. Um, so this is not as long, which make, means that it's not as compressive because it doesn't go around as many times. But I actually liked that because after I was able to, um, after I was able to change them out myself, I didn't need to have it as tight as, as I did the first week when I wasn't able to remove it. So having the option between the two of them was really nice. And also um, after, I only had to wear the bandage for two additional weeks after I had my post-op appointment um, just while uh, while the nipple grafts were healing. But I actually continued to wear one at night after that for, I wanna say like an, another week or two, um, just because it actually, it just felt more comfortable for me. I just felt kind of more protected that way. So I would just wear this one pretty loosely and it made me feel kind of secure without being like super tight. So. 
I did appreciate having the, the shorter one, um, but I don't know if you can actually get one this long off Amazon. Um, you could just get two of these and stick them together because all it does is Velcro. So you can just put two together. It's, it's not like it would be that hard, but I don't know, this one was fine for me. And speaking of the nipple graphs, um, I got this gigantic package of gauze pads that are four inch by four inches. And uh, as you can see, I still have like a ton of them left. And also with some of the stuff I'm talking about here, you might not actually need it during the first week, but it's good to go ahead and have it because you are going to need it like at the end of that week and you're not gonna want to be like going around trying to shop for all this stuff like at the last second. But I think my mom did use a few of these gauze pads when she was uh, emptying my drains. So this was actually a little bit useful during that first week, but more so afterward when I needed to change out my nipple grafts. I actually had two different kinds of medical tape that I used to hold the gauze pads on. I started out using these Telfa pads, which I've talked about in a couple other videos, but um, they're basically kind of like just giant band-aids, but um, the only reason I stopped using these is because the adhesive on it irritated my skin, but these are really nice to use. Like they would have been perfect. So I, I still keep talking about them even though I didn't, they didn't end up working out for me because I feel like they would be useful to somebody else. Um, so just another thing to keep in mind, but uh, I did end up switching to gauze pads held on by medical tape. And so I got, first I got this cloth tape and it was pretty good, but um, after a while I felt like I didn't really need that much uh, tape because this is kind of wide. So I switched to just regular paper tape that I got from like Target or something, maybe Publix, I don't know. Um, and they were both fine. So even though I had a reaction to several different kinds of adhesives, I did not have a reaction to either one of these. To empty my drains, my mom also used these um, alcohol wipes and some gloves to stay sanitary and everything. Um, and as far as emptying the drains goes, you will probably get some kind of um, instruction on that from the nurse or whoever it is that does your, uh, your discharge from the surgery center or hospital where you have the surgery. Um, so I'm not gonna really explain anything about that, but we were given a chart that we could fill out with the information about the amount of fluid that we were emptying out of the drains or that my mom was emptying really. So I definitely recommend keeping track of that somehow, whether you make your own chart or whether you're given one, and then also keeping track of all the medications. I should have mentioned this before when I was actually talking about those, but uh, it's so much easier just to use like pencil and paper, or pen and paper to actually like make a note of when you are taking all your medications so you can keep track of them because you probably will have a decent amount. I had more than the average person because I already have some prescriptions that I take and I also have some other supplements that I take, but it still just made it so much easier to have a chart where we could just like find, like be able to know like when I was supposed to take everything and be able to check it off and make sure that I wasn't taking too much of anything, etc. The last couple of things I'm gonna talk about are again, things that you don't need during the first week, but they're good to go ahead and get so that you'll have them ready. Um, so Neosporin or Bacitracin or whatever, something like this is what um, at least I was uh, told to use on my nipple grafts when I would um, dress them every day. And then um, for scar care, I originally started out using Mepiform scar sheets that I would just cut into strips and these were fine, but um, I later switched to Mepitac tape, which is pretty much the same principle. It's just, it's already in a tape form. So you don't have to really cut lengthwise. You just cut the length of it that you need and then use it. And I actually kind of like this better, but both of these I got on eBay and they both are a little bit expensive to buy retail. Even though you're probably not gonna start your scar care right away because you do want the incisions to heal fully. Um, if you are gonna be shopping around for these, then it's a good idea to go ahead and be looking for them and getting ready to, to get them and everything. So if you're gonna get them on eBay like I did, then you'll probably wanna you know, create like a little saved search or something so it can tell you um, when there are new items available and that, that way you can get a decent price for them. And then the absolute last thing I'm gonna talk about here is you're probably gonna to wanna to take some things to do to keep, your, to keep you occupied. Um, we had a TV that had like Netflix and stuff on it, but we didn't really watch too much of that. Uh, we watched it a little bit, but mostly um, I actually brought my computer with me. So I actually spent a lot of time on the computer, um, both just like doing like computery stuff, but also I was making videos. So I was like editing the videos and, and everything like that. Um, 
for me, that was very easy to do because we were driving down and I have a Mac mini, so it was really easy to carry and set up the computer and everything. Um, but, uh, you know, you might have a laptop or a tablet or something like that that would serve the same purpose. And then also did a bunch of crossword puzzles, so that was fun. So basically just bring stuff to do, whether it's a book or a game or really anything that you want to do um, just to occupy your time because you definitely don't want to get so bored that it it gives you anxiety or that you like start, like you don't want to be just like sitting around doing nothing basically. You'll kind of go store crazy if you do that. So I think that covers everything. If there's anything I didn't mention that you want to know about, please leave a message in the comments and I will try to address that in the future. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more of my future content. And make sure you hit that bell icon so you don't miss anything that I upload. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.